Tammy the Tasmanian Tiger, part of the Monkey Girl series. Here we go. Good morning, those of you who have had the pleasure of getting a good night's sleep and are just waking up, and welcome to your most extreme station, playing the most extreme 24 hours a day, Voodoo 103.5. I am DJ Extreme, and as I've been broadcasting, I've nearly completed the task of staying awake for a thousand hours, and it's been a grueling 41 and a half days with only the energy drink Blue Steer aiding me in the extreme fatigue I am feeling. Blue Steer energy drink brought to you by the most extreme radio station in Wildsville, Voodoo 103.5. Now joining me for the 12 o'clock lunch beat is Alex Bear. The radio station airwaves function accordingly in all parts of the world. But there has always been some extra props, prizes, and adventures to be found for some lucky listeners. Voodoo 103.5 Wildsville radio host DJ Extreme has remained sleepless the last thousand hours, and the effects of insomnia and exhaustion have nearly driven him insane. Alex Bear, DJ's co-host, announces the grand prize for caller number 99 and 100. Though yet to be said over the radio, the prize is promoted as extreme. Glued to the radio, the Armstrong family awaits for the time to come for calling the station. All are excited at the chance for the mystery prize, especially Alice. The countdown begins in 5, 4, Three, two, one. But blocks away at the monkey residence, Kim tells Jania to call for pizza. The station's phone rings and all the lines are busy, but both girls are told to be kept on hold until available. Then DJ Extreme answers, Thank you for calling and congratulations. You are caller number 99, which means you are one of the lucky contestants to win the grand prize. What is your name? Alice smiles wickedly, but only manages to scream with happiness. Ah! <laughs> on the other line on hold, Jania grows impatient and nearly hangs up when... Congratulations, you are caller number 100, which means you are the final contestant to win the grand prize. What is your name? Yeah, hi. I'd like to place an order. I want a large pizza with extra cheese, pepperoni... Bananas? What? What do you think this is? A pizza place? GJ Extreme shouts. What? Jania shrieks. Haven't you been listening to my show? I've been up for a thousand hours and you haven't heard. Jania is confused. Isn't this Jack's pizza? She asks. The DJ is irate and he begins ranting and the lack of sleep has made him extra cranky. Jania hands the phone to Kim and walks away. Kim listens over the phone, calming down the DJ before accepting the grand prize, which she has barely heard of. After lunch, Jania, Kim, and Melissa head over to the station headquarters to claim the prize. Oh, how lovely. I do hope it's a trip to somewhere nice. Oh, a, a getaway sounds so lovely, noted Kimberly, feeling the most excited of all. Maybe it's a shopping spree, Mom, rejoined Melissa ever so curiously. Hopefully money. And if so, I want at least a thousand dollars, remarks Jania. Finally, the car pulls up into the parking lot and the three monkeys head inside the large white building. I'm so excited. It doesn't even bother me that it's all the way on the 317th floor in room number 789, cried Melissa as the monkeys walked up the stairs into the building with the out-of-service elevator. Upon finally reaching the hallway near the room, Jania could hear a familiar voice call to her. Hello, monkeys. It was Alice Armstrong, along with her mother and younger sister, Ashley. What are you doing here? Jenny alleged in a disturbed tone of voice. Soon, both families were near the door. 
Before opening, the monkeys, Kim and Melissa, greeted their Armstrong counterparts. Hello, Ashley, greeted Melissa blissfully. But, but Ashley just responded in a sarcastic tone. Hi. Hello, Arden, professed Kim. Kimberly, said Arden. Then there was silence. The Armstrongs, being the only human residents in Wildsville, <laughs> looked down upon the other creatures, for because they felt that they were human, they were better than everyone else. Come on, girls, let's go inside, Kim told her daughters. I hate them, Janiel whispered as she entered the room. So do I, dear, Kim added softly. Inside the room, both families were dumbfounded at the sight. DJ Extreme was fast asleep, face down on the desk, snoring like thunder. For a short moment, no one gestured to awaken the DJ. Then Ashley grew impatient and pounded her fists on the desk. DJ Extreme awoke startled and confused. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wake me up when September ends. The DJ slowly buried his head once more into his arms and fell fast asleep. Hey, wake up! Ashley shouted. Whoa, 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 whoa. DJ awoke super shocked. We're here for the grand prize, demanded Ashley. The DJ was barely coming to, his eyes blood red, and his hands were completely covering his head. I don't know what they are here for, remarked Alice, referring to the monkeys. We're here for our grand prize, answered Melissa. So you guys are caller number 100. <laughs> Always one better than them, aren't we, said Alice. Now before he could doze off again, DJ Extreme handed the two families their grand prize. Both families looked to see what they had won. A free, all-expenses-paid trip to Tasmania. Well, we get a lovely uh, getaway vacation. Sounds <sighs> lovely, said Kim. Just what you wanted, Mom, said Melissa. Blech. I wanted money, exclaimed Jania. Now, Jen, settle down. We'll have a look at the grand prize, said Kim, opening the prize envelope, which read, Congratulations, you are the winner of an all expenses paid trip to Tasmania, a wonderful island just off the coast of Australia. Tropical and extremely dense forests and beautiful sandy shores await. Ticket good, one per passenger. Kim then reached inside the envelope and pulled out three tickets. The tickets read that the trip was from Friday to Sunday evening. This wasn't good news for Kim. She had to work Friday and Saturday and had no vacation hours left. Oh, Mom, Melissa groaned sadly. How can we go without you, asked Jania. On the drive home, Kim said with a heavy heart, Now, girls, there is no reason you two can't go without me. Take a friend. I'll be fine. Melissa didn't want to, and at one point stated she should just give, up, give her ticket away or maybe they could all sell their tickets. But Kim wouldn't allow it. Go, have fun, she said. Once Thursday came, the monkeys were set to go. Melissa was still a bit downcast because she knew her mother really wanted to go. But they were taking one of Melissa's best friends with them, Cassie Fox. Now you two be very careful and Jania take care of your little sister and behave yourselves. And have fun. Remember, I want to see lots of pictures, Kim reminded her daughters. After picking up Cassie, they headed to the airport where Kim dropped them off. You three be very careful and have the time of your lives. I'll miss you. Melissa gave Kim a big hug, her eyes teary, but still very excited about going to Tasmania. And before they knew it, the three had boarded the plane. Oh my gosh, no way! I didn't notice these were first-class tickets, cried Jania. Now even more exhilarated, 
Jania, Melissa, and Cassie hurried aboard the long flight, flight of stairs to the entrance of the plane. But much to Jania's disappointments, Alice Armstrong was also riding first class, along with her little sister Ashley, and much to everyone's surprise, Courtney Fox, Cassie's older sister. The accompaniment of the other three girls practically ruined Jania's 24 hour long flight. But finally, the monkeys, Armstrongs, and their guests, the foxes, arrived on Friday at 12 noon in Hobart, Tasmania. At the hotel resort, the girls unpacked in their respective rooms and parleyed on where to visit first. Jania wanted to go to Port Arthur and relax by the beach but Melissa and Cassie wanted to visit the eucalyptic forest. At first, Jania scolded Melissa, telling her that if she wanted to, she should just go on her own, but then thought better of it and how mom might not be too happy should something happen. Okay, fine, we'll visit the forest trails first, but tomorrow we go to the tropics, deal? Melissa agreed and reluctantly, Jania joined the two girls on their way to the eucalyptic forest. They took the subway and trolley buses to the end of the city. They walked for about a quarter mile until they reached a place deep in the woods and were certain they were lost. Well, I think we're lost. Good job, Mal, grumbled Jania. We're not lost. Um, we just have to find out where we are, claimed Melissa. But the question is, where are we? wondered Cassie. Then a heavy wind began to gust. It was strange because only a moment ago, the weather was placid. The clouds blocked the sun's rays from entering the dense forest. And for a while, the breeze seemed to echo. Then everything was still. You are in Malbana, a voice softly spoke. The three girls turned fast in the direction of the voice, and there, directly in front, was a strange-looking man staring back at them. Oh, we're sorry. Are you lost too? asked Cassie. Why no, puppet. I'm familiar with these woods. I, I used to live here long ago. Who are you? inquired Jania. Just call me W.B. I was raised here in Malbana, and I must say, you three are very fortunate, you are, responded the mysterious stranger. So you know how to get to the eucalyptic forest, asked Melissa, to which W.B. responded, you're in it. This is a eucalypt forest. It's amazing, no? Well... It's full of, a uh, green? <laughs> Cassie stuttered. Long ago, this was a thriving farmland. And there are still farms which stand in this very day. Though they are all unoccupied, untenanted. They are merely shadows of their former selves. Though they hide their secrets well said W.B. The three girls stood puzzled, hanging on his every word. Oh, what a fool one can be in his youth, W.B. continued. And if only one could be permitted to turn back the hands of time and mend one's past mistakes. But alas, no such luxury exists. Poor little creatures. Uh... What creatures? thought Melissa. The spirits, bellowed W.B. The three girls simultaneously exclaimed, Spirits? Then W.B. continued, Long ago, the greatest tragedy in nature had been committed. Restless I am, for I shall always undertake in the demise of many innocents. And dare I feel one of my descendants shares my prejudice. But wait, perhaps some might still survive. And if so, 
my conscience may rest yet, and I wallow in the sadness and guilt no longer. For I deeply repent and pray that I may be absolved. Jania could barely understand and she spoke with impatience. Repent for what? That what might have survived? What are you talking about and, and who are you? Then W.B. paused a moment. He studied the three girls in a ghastly manner, then spoke out very hesitantly. The spirits of the forest. Jania, Melissa, and Cassione gazed back as W.B. turned around and whispered loudly, Spirits of the forest? Before vanishing amongst the trees, W.B. looked back at the women. Spirits of the forest. And with that, he was gone. Back at Hobart, it was clear how the Armstrong sisters and their guests would begin their holiday from home. At the salon and spa for some manicures and pedicures. Relaxing and being pampered, the three debated amongst each other where to go to next. How about the theaters? Some popcorn, sodas, and check out what's playing. Teen love affairs, suggested Ashley. Ashley, really? The movies? We could do that back home, Courtney chastised. Well, maybe we should go down to the club and find us some Aussie boys, declared Courtney. How about we go back to our rooms? There's a pool in a restaurant. We could order room service. This trip is all expenses paid, said Alice. Then, a young human woman, maybe a couple of years older, chuckled at them from afar. Ha! <laughs> Teenagers. Don't know what to do with that time, so they waste it. The three girls then turned to the girl. I'm sorry, are you eavesdropping on our conversation? Proclaimed Alice to the stranger. <laughs> It's not eavesdropping if you're talking so loud the whole salon can overhear you, love, remarked the girl. Well, if we were speaking to you, then we'd be looking at you then, wouldn't we, stated Ashley. Well, you got your mud pies on me now, Sheila, said the strange girl. Who are you, asked Alice. The name's Roxanne. I'm amused by you tourists and your indecisive mean. You're all the same, really. Oh, yeah? Well, we're just looking for something to do around here. Something fun, said Ashley. Roxanne stood up from her seat and walked towards them. Well, I could show you some fun. You're new here. I'll show you all the hot spots. The laughs me gets. The fun. Even some trouble. But fun trouble. Oh, I'm a lass who lives on the edge. Not your typical manny petty type. Then why are you at a salon? Asked Alice. Because this blooming shrimp of an owner owes me a hen's tooth. For cleaning out that insect kettle he calls a home. Replied Roxanne. The three girls decided they would let this new, rough, tough, buff enough girl join them. She could be fun. Back at the forest, Cassie, Melissa, and Jania walked through the bush. It was still early, and there was quite a bit of hours of daylight left, so they weren't worried about much, except about not finding a way out before dark. They hadn't walked too far before they were in an open space with hills. They walked further until they came across something very odd. A farm. Abandoned and broken down. But undoubtedly a farm. As they came even closer, they saw a name engraved on the iron mailbox head. Wilfred Batty. Wilfred Batty? How strange, said Melissa. What's so strange about it? cried Jania. Look at the initials, replied Melissa. What about them? Jenny, the first letters of each name. They're, 
Melissa was interrupted by a rustling noise coming from the bush. What was that? shrieked Cassie. Shh! Melissa tiptoed in the direction of the sound. The noise grew louder and closer. Spirits of the forest, shivered Cassie. Melissa creeped closer and closer. And then something ran from the bush deep into the woods. Melissa was startled and stood motionless a minute, then turned to Jania and Cassie, shouting for them to come on. The three girls ran after the creature as fast as they could, not knowing which direction it came from or the direction it was going, but following the sound of its footsteps and the rustling of the leaves. Then Melissa stopped to catch her breath. Jania and Cassie soon caught up. They were in a clearing. Well, what was it? Jania cried. Shh! Melissa tripped. Then she picked herself up and tried to hear. Nothing. Well, thanks for the excitement, said Jania, sarcastic. Come on, let's go. Melissa hesitated to move. But then, there was that noise again. It wasn't far. And all three heard it. It was coming from behind one of the eucalyptic trees. Melissa approached slowly, peeked from behind, and saw a strange creature with a long snout, long body, long tail. It looked like a reddish dog, but it had stripes. Melissa didn't know what this thing could be. Jania and Cassie soon came by to check it out. The creature turned its back. It was eating something. Melissa then slinked silently closer and then cried, Um, excuse me. The creature looked up at Melissa, its brown eyes fixed on hers. The poor creature was so afraid but had nowhere to run. Back off, it cried. Hey, calm down. I'm not going to hurt you. Are you okay? Melissa asked. The creature studied Melissa a bit, sniffing and eyeing who are you? asked the creature. I'm Melissa, a monkey, and we're visiting here. We? Yes, we. My sister and my best friend. The creature then spotted Jania and Cassie. Oh no, I let you three see me? Oh no, my mom's gonna kill me, she said. Mom? You have a mom? There's more of you? asked Melissa. No, no more. Just me. I... Oh, the creature sighed nervously, playing with her hair. It's okay. We want to be friends. I just thought you were lost too, said Melissa. N no, I I'm not lost. I was just getting something to eat, replied the creature. Oh... I, I see. Well, like I said, my name is Melissa. That's my sister, Jania. And this is my best friend, Cassie Fox. What's your name? Melissa asked. The creature didn't answer. She was very shy and nervous. Jania and Cassie then came closer. Cassie smiled and waved politely. While Jania stood with a confused look on her face. You guys aren't going to hurt me, are you? Asked the creature. No, of course not. I just thought you needed help, replied Melissa. Tammy, said the creature. Huh? The three thought. You asked my name. My name is Tammy, said the creature. I'm a thylacine. Oh, a, a what? Said Jania. A thylacine. A Tasmanian tiger. Tammy said, but the three only looked at her in perplexity. What's a thy, a whatever, <laughs> a thylacine, and it's what I am, said Tammy. And that's a real animal, asked Jania. Tammy giggled. Well, she touched her shoulder <laughs> and her face. I'm real. 
Okay, so you know how to get out of here? Asked Jania. Oh, yes. I have been around this forest many times, said Tammy. Ah, oh, and do you live here with your family? Asked Melissa. Family? Well, uh... Hey, how about I show you three the way out? Tammy changed the subject. The three girls nodded, but Melissa still wondered why Tammy wouldn't answer her. Still, she decided not to intervene in another's business. The four girls walked on, talking about many things from the weather to the sights. Say, have you been to Port Arthur? Is the beach nice? Jania asked Tammy. I've never been there, so I'm sorry, I can't answer. Then Melissa questioned, Tammy, how long have you lived here? All my life. I've always been very adventurous, but well, some things I can't say. Then Cassie tripped over something. A rope had clasped itself around her leg and the rope stretched tightly. Before everyone knew what had happened, Cassie was hanging upside down from a tree branch. Help me! Get me down, she cried. Cassie, how did you get up there? exclaimed Melissa. I don't know, just get me down. Jania and Melissa wondered what they should do. Then Tammy began bouncing, and with a giant leap, she jumped high in the air, and her jaws opened wide, and then, snap! Tammy bit the rope and set Cassie free. Jania and Melissa were in awe at the fact that Tammy could hop higher maybe than even a kangaroo, and her jaws opened super wide, so that it had to be the largest gape they had ever seen. Are you okay? Tammy asked Cassie. I'm fine. You saved me. Thank you, replied Cassie. What was that? Jania cried. A trap said Tammy. A trap for what? Melissa wondered. I don't know exactly for what, but I'm sure I know what species created it, said Tammy. Who? They all wondered. Well, you see, I know stories of a type of creature that hunts and uses unusual devices such as this one to catch things, said Tammy. You mean humans? asked Jania. Yes, they are dangerous. I've never seen one, but I've heard that they're hunters of all living things. Well, I don't know about hunters, but the ones I know are stupid, remarked Jania. Tammy paused as if in shock. You you know a human? she asked. Huh, I know more than one. They're all disgusting, trash-talking, conceited, rude beasts, but harmless nonetheless, expressed Jania. Is everything all right, Tammy? Cassie asked. I'm good. Yeah, come on, let's go. And the girls continued to walk until they came across the end of the eucalypt forest. Oh, at last we're out of there, alleged an overjoyed Jania. Melissa noticed Tammy was lagging behind. Melissa turned to walk towards her. Thank you for showing us the way out. We really appreciate it, she said. You're all very welcome. I had fun, added Tammy. So, do you want to hang out sometime? Asked Cassie. Yeah, it would be fun. We can all be friends and do things together, claimed Melissa. Jania added, yeah, I, I gotta admit, I wouldn't mind it either. So what do you say? Tammy stood motionless a moment and then smiled. She didn't know whether or not she could trust the new girl she had barely met but sense nothing wrong. Ah, uh, I'll see. Maybe someday we can. Sure. If you're ever in the forest again, probably, uttered Tammy. Melissa noticed that Tammy would not come out of the shadows of the trees. She remained there as if hiding. Well, we'll see you again. Bye, and thank you, said Melissa. Bye. Be careful, said Cassie. See ya, cried Jania. Goodbye, friends, Tammy replied softly. 
Then, as Jania and Cassie were out of sight, so too Tammy began making her own way back home. She came across a giant eucalypt tree, studied her surroundings carefully so that she was sure that no one could see her, and then crept inside the hollow bark and closed the door, locking it. Back at the hotel, the three girls couldn't stop talking about their new friend. She's so cool. Did you see how she jumped so high to save me? declared Cassie. I know, and man, she opened her mouth big, professed Jania. Yeah, she's incredible, but she seems very secretive. Did any of you get that feeling, like she was hiding something, stated Melissa. You know, now that you mention it, she never did tell us if she was the only one of her kind or anything I don't else. think... Jania began talking, then stopped in mid-sentence. What? Well, earlier, that strange human we met in the forest, he seemed odd. Like if he was a... Uh, a ghost, cried Melissa. Yes, and he mentioned something about other ghosts too. Or... Spirits. Wait, wait, you don't mean to tell us that Tammy could be a a ghost, alleged Melissa. A spirit of the forest, declared Cassie. Back at the forest, safe in her burrow, Tammy helped her mother care for her younger siblings and her father prepare dinner. Eating peacefully, Tammy couldn't get her head around the new creatures she had met. They certainly were strange but somewhat interesting. Her mom noticed her daydreaming and decided to call her back to Earth. Tammy, dear, your food will get cold before you take your second bite, she spoke. Uh, I'm sorry, Mama. I was just thinking about... Tammy stopped, for she knew she couldn't say what had happened, for it would frighten her family. A, a dream I had, she lied. Mama raised an eyebrow and Dad looked suspiciously. What? Tammy grunted. Tammy's baby sister, Tabby, giggled as she splashed her hands in her food, then pointed to her saying, Tammy, sneaky. Tammy, go upsies, where Mommy say no, no. Tammy's mother gasped and her father grunted. Tabitha! Tammy shouted at her baby sister. Oopsie, Tabitha. Tabby whispered. Tammy's mom wasn't very happy. Tammy, did you go outside of the den? Into the forest? She demanded to know. Tammy uttered yes very softly. What have we told you about going outside? Don't you know you could have been seriously injured? Screamed Mama. Now, Terry, calm, calm down. She's all right, Dad said trying to calm mom down, but it didn't work. Nigel, how many times has she been forbidden to creep out of the safety of our home? She doesn't listen. Tammy took a deep breath and decided she better let her parents know that she also met some creatures earlier this day. When she did, Terry nearly fainted, but she came to just in time to lecture Tammy once more. Tammy, we love you and we fear for you. But why? asked Tammy. We've told you a thousand times why. Our kind is not respected by the outside world. I've told you many times how those evil humans nearly extinguished us years ago. But, but Mama, they weren't humans. They were just regular animals like us, added Tammy. That doesn't matter. Don't you remember I told you how long ago when the humans began hunting us? The other animals mocked us and claimed that we were inferior, just as the humans said. Remember your great uncle Benjamin, who was caught by the humans and forced to live and die in the zoo, tortured, lonely? Tammy nodded hesitantly. She feared her mother was right. Tammy, stay down here. Don't trust these creatures, whatever they are. They are not good animals. 
they're not your friends, her mom told her. Tammy responded sadly. Yes, Mama. In her room at night, Tammy feared her mom's warnings and wondered sleeplessly. What if they aren't good creatures? What if she could only trust her own family? Should she ever even think about leaving the burrow again? Is this why all the remaining thylacines hide in the underground tunnels like her family does? The next morning, Jania, Melissa, and Cassie awoke early and headed to Port Arthur, which was, at best according to Jania, an, eh, attraction. After lunch, Melissa insisted they go back to the eucalypt forest to meet up with Tammy. They all agreed and headed out. After a night of rough housing, graffiti, motorcycling, and tearing up the town, Alice, Ashley, Courtney, and Roxanne decide to go back and grab a bite. Hey, after this, can we go back to the hotel room? We haven't slept all night. And I need my beauty rest, asked Courtney. Beauty rest? Life's too short, Foxy. Besides, it can't get any worse for you, remarked Roxanne, laughing loudly. Alice and Ashley chuckled forcibly as Courtney lowered her head. Oh, come on, Yanks. Let's head out for a nice ride down the gully to the old forest, Roxanne told Alice and Ashley. The three would tag along with Roxanne as they rode down to the eucalypt forest. The four walked deep into the woods and stopped at the tree with the broken rope. Blast! Me trap came to naught, Roxanne angrily proclaimed. What did you set the trap for? asked Alice. For whatever is stupid enough to be caught, Roxanne said before breaking into laughter. Ashley then began to laugh with her, nudging Alice to join in. Then Roxanne urged the girls to move along. Courtney struggled behind, whispering in Alice's ear. I don't know about this girl. She's loud, rude, and, well, prone to trouble. Oh, Courtney, get real. She's fun, said Alice. Alice noticed Ashley had taken quite a liking to Roxanne's demeanor. Heading down the same path, Jania, Melissa, and Cassie soon met up with their, huh, quote-unquote, friends. What? What's this? clamored Roxanne. Jania cried, Alice? Courtney? Ashley? What are you all doing here? And who's this, uh, girl with you? This is Roxanne. And she's fun, answered Ashley. But she's a human, just like you two, said Jania. Well, that's what makes it better, replied Alice. <laughs> Whatever, uttered Jania. You don't mean to tell me you know these animals, Roxanne remarked vulgarly. Well, we go to school with them, but we're not friends, answered Alice. Yeah, we're definitely not friends, added Jania. <laughs> Indeed. Let's roll, said Roxanne. So, what are y'all doing here, anyway? Ashley asked in a rude tone. Who cares? Come on, demanded Roxanne. Alice and Ashley followed, but Courtney stayed behind. Jania was surprised Courtney didn't follow the humans. I'd like to go with you three if that's okay, Courtney requested. After a, a moment of silence, the three girls approved. So what are we looking for here, Courtney asked. A friend of ours. She's, uh, well, a ghost, Cassie answered. Oh, come on, get real, Courtney said. Well, honestly, we don't know that. But, Melissa began. The giant eucalypt tree wasn't far from them. And once again, Tammy emerged from the entrance, sealing it shut as she exited. Tammy could hear the voices of Jania and the others talking. Tammy crept behind the bushes until she spotted them. Insulted, 
Courtney continued ranting. Come now. You girls expect me to believe in spirits of the forest? Spirits? Tammy showed herself. Tammy! cheered Melissa. Yep, it's me, Tammy chuckled. Then Cassie moved in closer and began sniffing, then feeling Tammy's arm. What are you doing? Tammy asked. Cassie halted. Hey, she's not a ghost. A, a ghost? What are you talking about? asked Tammy. Well, it's just that we heard about spirits or something. Never mind, said Melissa. You thought I was a spirit? Tammy laughed. So you're not? asked Jania. Nope. I'm alive and well, said Tammy. Turning to Courtney, Tammy asked, A new friend? This is my older sister, Courtney, said Cassie. What are you? Courtney asked Tammy. She's a fox, can't you tell? joked Jania. Courtney crept closer to get a better examination. She's not a fox, that's for sure. Are you a wolf? she asked. Nope, I'm a thylacine. A marsupial, said Tammy. <sighs> Never mind. Well, as long as we're all friends here, what do you girls want to do? I don't know, said Melissa. Tammy thought, well, I know what we can do. So Tammy took the girls past the eucalypt forest and into some of Tasmania's loveliest and most secret places, such as Wallaby Rock, Bunyip Country, and the Boomerang Caverns. There the girls slam in the clear water river flowing through the valley, ate from the deggery loom trees and the ripe fruit within, and watched as the annual BC obstacle course race was about to commence. But before the race could begin, the PA announcer noticed that a racer, the platypus, had suffered an upset stomach and needed to drop out. So sorry, mates, but the race cannot pursue with only seven contestants, he announced over the megaphone. Everyone was disappointed until Melissa remembered how Tammy had leaped high into the air to save Cassie. Tammy, why don't you enter, said Melissa. No, Melissa, no, I, I can't, whispered Tammy. Yes, do it. Come on, insisted Cassie. No, uh, I'm good, said Tammy. Oh, come on, cried Jania. Then the three girls began to chant, Tammy, Tammy, Tammy. Before long, other audience members joined in. Before the kookaburra ringleader identified the crowd favorite, calling to her, You there, the one with the stripes. Come down here, pretty girl. Then everyone was urging Tammy to race. Well, if you want me to. Tammy headed onto the track. Tammy was given the number eight to race. The other contestants, including the kangaroo, the emu, the wombat, the wallaby, the bandicoot, the Tasmanian devil, and the tiger quoll, didn't give this strange new racer much of a chance, though Tammy had received great inspiration from her fan base, led by Melissa, Jania, and... Cassie and Courtney. The gun sounded and the race was on. The kangaroo took the early lead with the wallaby in close second, followed by the bandicoot and quoll, but Tammy fell in last place very quickly. The first obstacle was the hurdle, which the kangaroo and wallaby easily mastered. Then came the rope climbing obstacle. The race went on for 10 miles, jumping, sprinting, swimming, Tammy pulled ahead of the first six contestants and was hot on the kangaroo and wallaby's tails. The final obstacle was the one-mile sprint. Tammy had surpassed the wallaby by the second lap mark and was closing in on the kangaroo, who by this time was running extremely low on energy. With only a few kilometers left to go, Tammy sprinted to the finish line as the gun sounded. Tammy was the winner. And contestant number eight takes first place. 
Melissa, Cassie, Jania, and Courtney cheered loudly for their friend. Just a few rows before them, three new visitors were arriving at the race. Ashley, Alice, and Roxanne. Out to the Y! Move it! Roxanne jeered as she took the seats from the two monitor lizards. Roxanne, maybe... Maybe we shouldn't be like this, said Alice. Oh, please. They're stupid animals, nothing more. They're subservient to us. By the way, what is this stupid race? Roxanne answered. Jania, Melissa, Courtney, and Cassie hadn't noticed, for they were too filled with joy and pride in their friend. The kookaburra went up to Tammy. Young lady, what is your name and your race? he asked. Tammy couldn't speak a word, for she was filled with stage fright, but softly answered, I'm T -T Tammy. I I'm a thylacine. The crowd grew quiet for only a moment. Then the kookaburra answered, saying, Well, Tammy thylacine, congratulations. You are this year's first place obstacle course champion. And the crowd roared ecstatically again. Me? A, a champion? Tammy thought. How did you do it, Tammy? Tammy took a moment to dry the tears of her eyes. Well, as a Tasmanian tiger, I I'm built with excellent stamina, sir. And the crowd cheered louder than ever. Tammy looked on and spotted her friends cheering with them. And in her heart, she felt as if she belonged and was speechless blissful and grateful for her new friends. The contestants then received their medals and Tammy's first place was a beautiful solid gold talisman with a description reading for excellence, perseverance, and spirit. You are number one. Be proud and feel it. And Tammy was proud and the happiest she had ever been in her life. Boring, Roxanne stated rudely. Then she reached into her neighbor's goodie bag and pulled out a big, fat, squishy red bongo fruit. W wait, what are you doing? No, cried Alice. Roxanne hurled the bongo fruit as hard as she could onto the arena. Tammy looked down on her talisman medal, wearing it with jubilation and feeling on top of the world. Bam! The fruit burst onto Tammy's talisman and just covered her with the red juices. The crowd stopped cheering and grew silent. Tammy was shocked. Hey, every one of you. It's just a stupid animal, mocked Roxanne. Yeah, that's what it is, added Ashley as she picked up another fruit and threw it at Tammy. Soon the crowd began howling with laughter shouting vulgaries like stupid animal and pelted Tammy with fruits. Stop, cried Jania. And the four girls rushed to Tammy's aid, being hit by fruit themselves. Tammy slipped onto the wet, gushy floor. As she looked up, she realized she was wrong. There was no place in the outside world for her kind. Her mom was right. The sun began to set slowly. Tammy picked herself up and with eyes drenched in tears, ran crying back to the forest. Jania, Courtney, Cassie, and Melissa finally made it into the arena, but it was too late. Tammy had gone. The crowd soon stopped throwing fruit and again, nobody uttered a word. As if ashamed of themselves, they picked up their belongings and departed. Roxanne and Ashley laughed vehemently and their laughter echoed throughout the cavern. Alice shook her head sadly, ashamed and remorseful. Tammy ran back to the giant eucalypt tree with heavy tears still streaming down her face. She took the talisman from around her neck, then tossed it and opened the door to her home and made her way inside. Tammy, the girl shouted. Where could she have gone? I can't believe this, shouted Courtney, angry. 
For half an hour, the girls looked for Tammy, but didn't find her. Back at the Boomerang Caverns, the Armstrongs still remained seated. Roxanne came back to meet them. <laughs> fun, huh? I told you I knew fun, she told Alice. Alice didn't say a word. She had feelings of anger, remorse, and sadness. She got up off her seat. Well, that was a blast, wasn't it, Yank, said Roxanne. Leave me alone, Alice said. <laughs> What's up your knickers, said Roxanne. Ashley then came running up to her sister. Hey, Alice, did you see how we got that ugly creature good? <laughs> you should have joined in, Ashley. What? Be quiet. But, but I just stopped talking. Then Alice began heading back into the forest. Ashley and Roxanne followed. In the forest, the girls were still searching. I haven't found her, said Jania. Neither have I, added Melissa. We couldn't either, said the Fox sisters. Then they heard footsteps. They turned around fast. It was Alice. Alice, what do you want? Haven't you caused enough trouble, said Jania. Alice sniffed. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what my friend did to your friend. I, I want to help you look for her. Roxanne and Ashley finally arrived. Roxanne heard what Alice said and began laughing. What for, Jania asked. I want to make sure she's all right, replied Alice. She'll be fine as long as you three stay away from her, professed Cassie. Look, I want to make things right. I know we messed up, and I for one apologize, said Alice. Oh, I cannot believe what I'm hearing, Roxanne conveyed. Then Alice began again. I want to have a chance to show her. And you all. Not all humans are evil. I, I guess it's like everything else. There's good and bad in all of us. But we're not all bad. Jania walked up to Ashley's. Put her hand on her shoulder. And told her, well, that's a good analogy, I guess. It's just one problem, Alice. You're friends with one of the bad ones. Then Jania and the rest of the girls continued their search. Alice knew Jania was right. Come on, let's get out of here, Roxanne called. But Alice and Ashley didn't go. Come on, sis. Let's help them find Tammy, said Alice, and Ashley agreed. Roxanne stormed angrily back to her motorcycle. The girls looked all night but never found Tammy. Finally, they decided to retreat back to the hotel when Jania got an excellent idea. You know what's great about life? Karma. You mean to get back at that witch? Said Courtney. Mm-hmm. But maybe we'll never see her again. We leave in the morning, said Melissa. No, we'll do it tonight. I know where she stays, Alice said. The six girls then rushed down to Roxanne's cabin. She was fast asleep. They carefully moved her aside, and without awakening her, they placed her mattress on a wheelbarrow, then put her back on top. So glad she's a heavy sleeper, they thought. The next morning, Roxanne awoke from her sleep. <laughs> what a weird dream, she thought, then stepped out of bed and sunk deep into the water. What? What? Roxanne exclaimed as she splashed about. Both she and her bed were floating in a sea with absolutely no land in sight. Now all packed up, the girls were preparing to head out to the airport, but before they did, they all went back to the eucalypt forest one last time. They walked up and down the forest searching for Tammy, but once again, they didn't find her. I guess she's gone, 
said Cassie sadly. It's not fair. I'm going to miss her, Melissa began to cry. I, I wish I could have been her friend, said Jania. I wish I had gotten to know her better, added Courtney. We were stupid. I'm sorry for what I did, cried Ashley. You know what? I wish more than anything I could just see her and get to know her and let her know me. I wish all creatures could have appreciated this beautiful, unique, remarkable person that she is. Alice said, crying. Then the girls began to make their way out of the forest, walking right past the umbrage of the trees where Tammy had heard everything. The plane ride seemed longer than anyone could have imagined, but the girls were glad to be home. Kim was overexcited to pick up Ginny and Melissa, though couldn't help but notice they were much less enthusiastic than she expected. And particularly, Melissa seemed the saddest and thought throughout the night remained that way until she arrived home from school the next day. Melissa, you have a letter. Someone sent you this by mail, called Kim. Who from? asked Melissa. I don't know, replied Kim. Melissa opened the letter and smiled. It read, Dear Melissa, Hi, it's Tammy. I overheard what you girls said the last time you were in the forest, and thank you. I was going back out to get my first place talisman, and that's when I heard you. Don't be sad. I'm all right now. And someday, I hope that there are more friends like you girls out there. For now, I think it's best I remain hidden. But again, I hope that my kind will once again be able to walk the earth free and happy and out of the shadows. When you see your sister Jania and Courtney and Cassie and Alice and Ashley, tell them I said hi and maybe we'll meet again someday. Much love, Tammy. The End This is part of the Monkey Girl series. There are many more books like this, and I really enjoy writing them all. I hope someday to get them all published, but for now, if you can enjoy, <laughs> despite the way my voice sounds, <laughs> if you could enjoy the story and check out my website, link down below, I would really, really appreciate any feedback. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. And I appreciate all of you. God bless.